Good morning, everybody. Rick's making his way up here to the heckling row. <laughs> want to welcome everybody here this morning. We've got, um, I'll be doing our, our, what, I seem kind of loud. There we go. Um, I'll be doing our uh, lesson this morning. Ricky's gone to Costa Rica um, on a mission trip, and so we'll have a a few substitutes today, and I'm uh, the first one, so I apologize. But uh, I want to start out this morning, I guess, with our uh, with kind of a prayer list. Uh, if anyone has anyone that uh, that you want to remember in prayer, uh, if you would just let me know. Yes, sir, Rick. That's a rough. That's a rough deal having shingles. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Um, yes, that's right. Ruth Logan, she fell. Um, I think she's okay, but she's probably not going to be here, may not be here today. Well, actually, I've seen Greg, so I don't think she's here today. Uh, but just remember her in our prayers. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Jean's sister, Sandy. I've uh, got some more issues going on. Anything else? All right. If not, let's go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and for uh, blessing us, Lord, with the time to um, come together this morning to worship you on this first day of the week. Father, we pray that this morning that with the lesson that we go through today and the scriptures that we read will, um, will edify us, Lord, and will... Uh, help us in our in our daily daily walks, Father. At this time, we also would like to like to offer up a few people specifically and, and some issues specifically, Lord, uh, that that only you can you can help with, Lord. And we pray that pray that uh, you'll be with Rick's friend Craig, who is in South Carolina, who is dealing with shingles. And we know, Lord, that's a painful that's a painful ailment. And we pray that he will recover soon. Uh, Father, we pray, pray that you will be with Ruth Logan as uh, she is. Uh, she has fought, She fell, and uh, hopefully that you'll be recovering quickly and uh, be back with us with uh, uh, here here to worship with us. Father, also we we pray that you be with Miss Jean's uh, sister Sandy and uh, some more struggles that she's having with her illness, and we pray that you will you will help her and help her to recover as quickly as possible, Lord. Or, and that uh, that things will be will 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 turn out easier for her. Father, we also pray that you'll be with this country, uh, be with um, uh, just the, the the problems that are going on, Lord. The the shooting last yesterday, and we pray that um, that we can we can all find um, you know a, a way to, to to get along better. And Father, we uh, we pray that that you will that 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 we will start putting you first in this country so that, so that maybe, maybe we will start uh, uh, doing, doing, things, doing things better. Father, please forgive us of our sins and please be with me today as I present this lesson and help, it, help me to do it in a way that, that everybody will, will find beneficial. And uh, be, with, be with Ricky and uh, the Burgers and the Hattons as they're on their trip to Costa Rica right now and their mission trip and just bless that trip, Lord, and help them to, to reach, reach those who may be lost. Uh, Father, be with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm going to start with a question and a, and a show of hands. How many of you had a busy day yesterday? How many of you had a busy day Friday? How many of you had a busy day Thursday? 
How many of you have had a busy week? A busy month? What about a busy year? Okay. So I guess you kind of know what my lesson is going to be about today. And uh, it, it's, it's about busyness. Okay. The, the problem of busyness and the things that, that, that we have going on, um, you know, everybody has their story of the things that they've got going on. And everybody has, um, you know, has, has things that they have to do. Um, a couple weeks ago, I guess it was during VBS, James Sin came in here and he was talking about some things that he, he asked, what are some things that get in the way of, you know, that, that, that get, in our, get, get in the way of our Christian life? What are some, some things that we can, um, that, are, that are kind of uh, problems for us? And I remember David Harvey brought up a point. He said, busyness, being too busy. And, and James, James, if y'all know James, James is a, James is a go-getter. Um, but James said, ooh, ooh, I really wasn't thinking about that. That, that. that steps on toes. And it does. It steps on, I think, most of our toes. Um, we've got, uh, you know, we have busy lives. Um, we're, you know, we're living in a life where it's, it's very easy to overfill our day. Um, you know, there are conveniences that we have today that are supposed to make things more convenient to do things, right? But what does it do? What, what do these conveniences tend to do? Takes our attention, takes our time. It, it, it provides efficiencies, but do we use those efficiencies to do what? To do more, right? That's usually what happens. When we have these efficiencies, we, we, we still fill up that time with more and more and more and more. If you think about 1924, in 1924, were there, was, there, was there really, did everybody have access to the telephone? Not normally, no. Um, did people, everybody have access to a car? No. Um, did everybody have, you know, just, just all these different things that, that make things, well, planes. Were there, were, there, were there planes in 1924 that we were, we were flying around? No. So you think about the efficiencies that, that have come with in, in the world, that just allows us to do more, to, put, to, to fill up more gaps in our day. Um, you know, we would think that because of the, the conveniences we have that, that life could be simpler, but instead we've made it more complicated and more crowded. Um, busyness often gets in the way of many quests to draw closer to God. And that's the thing we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to start off with the, the dangers of busyness, okay? What are some of the dangers of busyness? We're going to look at some scriptures this morning as well, so, so get your Bibles ready. You know, a lot of times God is put on the back burner uh, when we're busy. If we, if we look at, uh, at Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds have the air, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, let, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but, first, but let me first say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, no one puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so they had other things they had to do. Is burying your father a bad thing? No. It's something we, we have to do. Is, is telling someone goodbye, I'm going on a journey, a bad thing? No, it's not. But Jesus was using this as saying, hey, if you're going to follow me, you've got to follow me. We've, we've, this, has to, this has to be a choice, and you can't look at the other things. Um, you know, 
when, when we're faced with the choice of serving God or, or pursuing other worldly endeavors, which one usually wins? Which one usually wins? I mean, I think of uh, even in the 19... I'm dating myself, but in the 1980s, nothing was ever scheduled on a Wednesday night. Nothing. As far as any kind of little kid thing, any kind of little whatever as far as that goes, like sports thing or whatever it is, um, but now, in today's world, what happens? Wednesday night is becoming consumed with other things. Um, this past year, I, my kids go to Mars Hill Bible School, okay? This past year, Mars Hill had a game that got canceled or something. I can't remember exactly what happened. But they had to play a game on Wednesday night because the Alabama High School Athletic Association said they had to. Well... Mars Hill had their devotion, and they still had the game on Wednesday night. Um, 1980, that would have never even been thought of, okay? The Alabama High School Athletic Association would have said something differently, or Mars Hill might have said something differently, said, hey, we're not going to do that. We're going to have to change something else. But we didn't, okay? So sometimes, you know, God is put on the back burner. Um, Luke 8, Luke 8, 14. Look at, uh, let's look at Luke 8, Verse 14, as for, and as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. So again, the thorny ground is the cares of the world that choke out God, that choke out the time. God often gets what's left over. Let's look at one other, one other verse. Look at uh, Matthew 6, 33. Everybody knows this, this, this verse. We will read it. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Does it say seek only on Wednesday nights when something else is not going on? Does it say seek on Sundays, which is the first day of the week, um, but, but don't seek other times? No, it says seek first. The kingdom of God. That's the first thing we should do. So, you know, we, we talk about firsts and we think about firsts. God wants our firsts. So what's the first thing we do in the morning? When the alarm goes off, what's the very first thing we do? Do we, do we read our scripture? Do we look and see what happened last night? Do we, what do we do? What's our first so we want to think about that. What are the things, what, what, how are you starting off the first part of your day? You know, self-evaluate that and, and, and see. I'm doing this lesson, quite honestly, for me, as much as I am for anybody else. And that's one of the reasons I did this lesson is because there's a lot of stuff that goes on and a lot of busyness that goes on. Um, so I don't, I, don't, I don't want to think, anybody think I'm pointing fingers because it's coming right back at me. Um, you know, is God really first in your life? That's one of the things you want to ask. So um, another, another danger of busyness is we can become distracted. So if you look in Luke chapter 10, verses 41, 42, somewhere in there, you know, we're, we're, it's talking about Mary and Martha. So what happens is Martha invites Jesus in, okay? Invites him into the house, right? So what does she do next? She's busy, right? She's getting things ready. You may ever had an event at your house, had somebody had, had guests over at your house. What, what do you do, man, when, when Sue Ann has stuff ready for us to do? If we have something that's, that's going on that we're going to have at our house, I know the day before it's going to be consumed with me getting things ready and her getting things ready, not just me by myself, but I'm, I'm in charge of making sure the outside looks nice. She takes care of the inside. But, but we get busy. And, and what did Martha do here? She got busy. She was trying to be hospitable, okay? Did she do anything wrong? Not really. I mean, she was, she was just trying to get things ready, but, you know, she got distracted over the many things, you know, rather than doing the more important things. And Mary did what was good. Mary did what was good. She actually sat down and listened. Um, you know, if we fail to do our job or schoolwork or whatever, what happens? What normally happens? If we don't do well in our job, Kevin, 
If someone doesn't do their job, what happens? They, they get, get fired, fired, okay? That's what happens, all right? If, if we're sitting there and we, we, we don't do a certain task or we don't do something as far as that goes, there's a consequence that shortly follows, okay, in most cases. What about spiritually? What about spiritually? If, if we don't do our tasks and what we're supposed to do on a spiritual basis, is there an immediate consequence? Guilt, okay. Yes, ma'am. We do. We do. That's right. But as far as you, you, you don't get excommunicated, do you? Most most times, you don't get, um, you know, say, hey, you're you're fired from from being a Christian. You don't. You, you do fall further away, but there's not an immediate like, you know, we live in an immediate society where we want to have things that are, you know. You, we want to have it now, and if something doesn't work out right, you want to get it right now. Um, and, and, and we don't, we don't have that. With, with in, in spiritual things, if we neglect things, there's often not an immediate physical con consequence. However, if we look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, this will hit on what you were talking about. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 1, therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. Okay. So, we drift. You know, we sometimes become so busy that we don't take the time to realize that we're drifting further away. We don't take the time to realize that, hey, you know, I, I hadn't been doing what I needed to do. I hadn't been studying the Bible because we're so busy with other things. We're so busy with doing the things that Martha was doing that we forget and we drift away. Also, the dangers of business is it can rob the joy out of uh, that, that ought to be in our lives. You know, if we're very busy, what, what normally happens when you're very, very busy? i tell you what happens with me. I'm not going to throw anybody else under the bus. But when I'm busy, when i got a lot of things going on, I am irritable. Okay? When I've got a lot of stuff going on, I am irritable. This past week, I have been moving my office from one place to the next. Everybody in my office walks in the door and they say, It's now a good time. And I'm like, no, but what have you got going on? <laughs> That's where I'm at. When, when, when I'm busy, I'm irritable. I don't really have that, that, the, the, a, a good spirit about me. All right? Um, and, it, you know, stress, anxiety, pressures, impatience, irritability, you know, there's a lot of unhealthy attitudes that, that, that come on when we're too busy. Um, look at Proverbs uh, 12, 25. And we'll go here. And it says, Anxiety is a man's in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. So when we're busy, we have, we're anxious, and, and, and it's not good for us. Um, you know, in Philippians 4.4, 4, it tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. And, you know, as does Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, I'm sorry, 5.16. So the stress of busyness can rob us of our joy. All right? It can, it can take that away. Another thing that busyness can do, danger, is it can hinder our effectiveness spiritually. You know, we know we have responsibilities, you know, some of which we've, we've talked about. But are we fulfilling those responsibilities? Um, maybe we're doing things that we believe are required, but, but why? You know, are, are, we, are we really giving our all to these things? Um, you know, it, 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 can, it can hinder our effectiveness spiritually. Uh, I, I will another throw myself under the bus thing. About two weeks ago, 
Ricky said, are you still good to speak on, um, what is today, <laughs> July the 14th? And I said, I am now, <laughs> because I had forgotten about it, because I had so many things going on. And he said, I love your text response. You know, I guess you got to get something together pretty quick. And I was like, yeah, I do, I do. So um, I, it kind of was like appropriate, because I was like, I wasn't even thinking about what was really important on July the 14th. I was thinking about all the other things that were going on. I thinking about all the other things that are going on in my life. And it, it really wasn't giving, I, I don't, I, was I giving a quality effort? Was I giving a quality effort during that time? No, I wasn't. But it makes you think about it. Um, you know, busyness is often a, a, a symptom of worldliness. If we look at uh, 1 John, 1 John 2 and verse 15, we'll look at verse 15 uh, through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes, the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. So the things that keep us busy in life, are they going to remain? Probably not. I mean, I, I, what, what's busying me right now is work. But in this, in this crowd that we've got today, how many of you are retired? You can raise your hand if you want to. All right, so does work continue? Work that you're that you're busying yourself with, not normally, not normally there. Your, your work is something that is going to be gone one day. Okay, as far as work from a from you know from what you do on a, on a daily basis, so it's something that's going to go away. But is is spiritual work ever done? No, it should not ever be done. Okay, um, what's the Bible say about busyness? We're going to cover a few things. We've addressed several passages. And um, while discussing the dangers, uh, so if we look at um, Luke chapter, well, we look, we've talked a little bit about that. So we, we look at excuses, you know, Mary and Martha, you know, Mary, Martha was making excuses of, of why she couldn't do things. Or, and she was like, why is Mary just sitting there? Um, you know, she, was, she had other things to do besides listen to what, what Jesus was saying. And, um, you know, those kind of things. Um, we look at Ephesians, let's look at Ephesians 5 in verse 15 and 16. It says here, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. So it talks about you know, making the best use of time. What, what, you know, it talks about redeeming our time, using our time wisely. Um, also, let's look at uh, another one. I really like this. It is First Thessalonians uh, 4. First Thessalonians 4, verse 11. And, yeah, that's right. And to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you. Live quietly. When you're busy, do you feel like you're living quietly? Not normally. You know, a quiet life, it says aspire. First Thessalonians says aspire to live quietly. And in, in First Timothy, we're going to have another theme on that. So First Timothy um, is... Chapter 2, in verses 1 through 3. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. Have you prayed for a quiet life lately? I don't know that I have. You know, for something that, that just calming. Have you prayed for that? It talks about, you know, in, in 1 Timothy that we should pray for that. Uh, that we should pray for, for a calm, quiet life. 
So now we're going to talk about, you know, we, we talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the things that, that we deal with? What are some, some problems with busyness? So how can we deal with that? Okay. Because how often do people ask you to do more? Quite often, right? So how do we deal with busyness? First of all, we need to realize that being busy is not wrong, okay? It's not wrong. You know, as we read the Bible, we find that we ought to be busy. You know, it, it, there, there's, there's, a, there's, a lot, there's a lot to do and very little time to do it. Now, can anybody agree that Jesus was busy? He was probably pretty busy, right? He had a lot to do. He had 33 years to get a lot done, all right? Um, so he was, he was very busy. Peter and Paul, they were busy doing the Lord's work. Uh, if we look at Proverbs chapter 18... Proverbs 18, and I lost my place, verse 9. Proverbs 18, verse 9. Whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who, he destro who destroys. So we don't want to be slack in our work. We don't want to be someone who is... Slothful. Whoever is slothful in his work is another is another version. Is a is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. That's one of the one of the verses or one of the um, translations. Um, also in Second Thessalonians three ten, if anyone will not work, let him not eat. Uh, Proverbs twenty one twenty five. The desire of a lazy man kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. So. Sloth and laziness is wrong. The Bible talks about that. But laziness is often tied to one who refuses to be busy. If we think about the parable of the talents, you know, you think about the guy who, who, was, who was the one that was probably the most busy? The one who had five talents and multiplied it to another five, right? Who was the one who was the most lazy? The one that just buried his, buried his money, right? Didn't do anything with it. Didn't invest it. Didn't do what he needed to do, okay? He, he was probably, we, we, so we look at those and we think, okay, if you're either busy or you're a sloth. <laughs> That's not the case, okay? We need to get that out of our, uh, out of our head. Um, you know, laziness is not necessarily the opposite of busyness. If one chooses not to do something or overbook book their life, it's not necessarily laziness. Okay, it's usually, it's, it's someone who is using wisdom to ensure that their priorities are in balance. Because that's the one thing that, that, is, that is difficult to do if we're, if we're dealing with, with busyness and some of the things that we deal with in biz, busyness. What's the hardest, why, why are some people, what do some, what, what's a two-letter word that some people struggle with saying? Right now, I have normally not been that person. <laughs> okay, I kind of know when I'm at my limit a lot of times, and I'll I'll say no to a lot of things. But but then there are other times when when no is harder to say. Um, but we have to know when to say no. We have to know when we don't have enough time to do these things. Uh, you know, a few years ago. Um, a, a good good lady in the church came up to Sue Ann and I, and they were like, "Hey, you've got this." The, or we were talking about all the things that we were doing, and this, that, and the other. And they said, "Well, don't." She said, "Don't burn yourself out. Don't get yourself to where you've got too much going on." And and y'all, I'm not saying that 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 I don't think we should burn ourselves out in in saying not saying no to certain things within the church. If you can't do a good job and you don't feel like you can do a good job of this, you feel someone else can do a good job at this, a better job at this, it's a time for you to say, hey, I, I, can't, I can't quite do this. Um, I'll give you an example. This is just my example, and I'm, I guess I'll use this. So um, I, have this I, have I have 
class today, right? So this morning I have a class, which normally I'm sitting here with everybody else. I'm not a normal teacher. So uh, normally I'm sitting out here with everybody else. And um, so I found out about this two weeks ago when Ricky texted me and reminded me, right? So I've got, I got that. And then um, Shane texted me yesterday and says, hey, you've got, you got song service. I'll be leading everybody singing here in just a little bit. Um, so you've got song service that you'll need to be leading here in just, uh, just a little while. I was like, okay, I can, I can handle that. Well, this is the second Sunday of the month, and um, everybody knows that uh, second Sunday of the month, except for my group, um, is, is Connect Group. Okay? That's where you get together and we do our, our, our fellowshipping and things of that nature and get our, get our cards for that and, uh, and reach out to, to other people. Well, today is my Connect Group, as everybody knows, because I texted earlier this week, I said, we're not meeting this week. <laughs> I got too much going on. Because after services this morning, I have to go over to my office and get about eight different things set up so that we'll be ready to run the next morning for our, so my business can run, I guess, the next morning. So I knew that Connect, I could not do it today. So I had to tell everybody, no, I can't do it today. It's going to have to be pushed to next week. Sometimes we have to do that. Because I wouldn't have been able to get it all done had, we not, had, had, I, had I just put it all in one thing. So we have to learn to say no. Um, another thing is we have, we have to realize that busyness, that being busy is not wrong. Another thing is we have to examine ourselves. You know, what are we doing to the glory of God? What are we doing on a daily basis to, to glorify God? Um, what, is, what does our time look like? And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment uh, when I talk about budgeting. Um, so we need to exam examine our, ourselves. Is everything that you're doing necessary or is it choices that you have made? Is it choices that you've done or is it something that's, that's, that's necessary? Um, we have to learn the importance of prioritization. All right, so Matthew 6.33, it says, seek ye first. So what should that, that mean? What should be our first priority? God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Okay. That should be our first priority. Um, we have to use our time wisely. We, we read this earlier, Ephesians 5.15, we have to redeem our time. So we have to use our time wisely and with purpose. Um, another thing is in, in Romans 2.12, or 12.2, I'm talking about renew your mind. You know, we, we also have to, have, to, have to rest a little bit. We have to put a little bit of time in there for rest. You know, the truth is we can't do everything. It's not always about good and versus bad. Sometimes it's about good, better, and best. What's really the best thing that you can do? What's really the best thing that's on your agenda? You know, we, we think about what, what Mary chose. In, in Luke 10, 42, it says she chose the good part. Martha wasn't bad, but, but Mary chose the good. So we need to know and we need to, we need to choose the, the, the good, better, best. If we have those three, three things, always choose best. Um. Another thing we need to do is, is, is make time for God. Okay. We, need to, we need to schedule time with God. So, sometimes we have certain things that we have to do. I mean, there's, there's, uh, I, have, I have two days out of the week that I have to commute, okay? And it's about a 45-minute drive as far as that goes. And so I have chosen uh, to get the Bible on... I guess an app or what have you, and just listen to that. And you can listen to it faster than most people can read, by the way, um, if you put it in a little bit faster time. And so you can get more in there, um, more of that technology stuff, getting more, getting more for less time, right? But, um, but for that 45-minute drive, you can be sitting there listening to the Bible. If you don't have time maybe to, 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 to spend 45 minutes that day reading, then utilize technology to, 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 to read the Bible, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm halfway through the Old Testament right now from just 
two days a week for the past three or four months. That's how fast it can, it can you know, that's how, that's how you can utilize your time. So, you know, we need to schedule personal time with God. We need to schedule time when we do certain things. And it doesn't have to be to where we're, we're you know, that is all we're doing, I suppose. I remember when I was, when I was younger, uh, we were going to kill in Church of Christ. And um, a guy said that he, was, he drove from killing to Muscle Shoals every day. For, for his work. And when he knew that when he was going down that road, Huntsville Road, you know, when you turn left, if you're going there and you go down Huntsville Road, that was when he was going to start praying. And he knew that pray, his prayer, he was going to have about a 20-minute prayer, and he was going to pray from there all the way to work. And that was his moment. Now, he didn't close his eyes, thankfully, um, you know, as far as that goes, but he had that moment that he took time with God and prayed. So we have to make time for God. We need to schedule personal time with him. Um, You know, sometimes we have to clean house, okay, in dealing with busyness. You know, something has to give. What are you willing to give up for him? You know, we're, we're, we're told to be sacrifices. We're told to be a living sacrifice. And, you know, in, in Romans 12, verse 2 we're, t- we're told to be a living sacrifice. So what are we sacrificing in our day for God? What are we sacrificing? What, what are some things that we do? Sometimes we have to get rid of things that are, that are getting in our way of being closer to God. Um, you know, are you willing to give up the pleasures of life to draw closer to Him? That's the thing you have to ask yourself. Another thing is um, that one of the things we need to do is uh, to, in order to deal with busyness is budget your time. Everybody knows my wife's an accountant, so we've been on a budget since I was 24 years old, I guess, or something like that. And uh, so we have, a, we have a, a monetary budget. But you also, you know, and that budget changes based on income, those kind of things as far as that goes. But what is one thing that... that You know, everybody here has 24 hours a day, right? Everybody here has it. So have you budgeted your time for God? You know, budgeting doesn't just apply to our money. It applies to our time. How much time are we spending with God? Um, And where does that fit into our, you know, I I know that from 8 to 5-ish, I have to work. That's a time that's budgeted for me, right? And uh, but but where does God fit in there? Where have we put that? Where have we put His time or His time into our twenty-four hour budget? That's the thing we want to look. You, you think about doing that. Um, balance. You know, we need to be busy. But the challenge is to, is to avoid being too busy. Um, you know, we, we don't want to get to a point where we're so busy that we think, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, and associating that with something that is the Lord's work. We don't want to do that. Because sometimes, you know, there are some things where I, I feel like I have to go to work. And, and there are days like that, okay? Um, and, and we feel like that's a have to. But we don't ever want that to us to be so busy that we think about God's work being that way. Um, so balance. Another is build in extra time. You know, as we, as we budget and balance our time, you know, there, there needs to be a margin in place. So if you've ever, if you've ever, Kevin, do you work on a calendar at work? Do you have calendars for schedules and appointments and all that stuff? Okay. So if you have an appointment at 1130 and it's supposed to be an hour-long appointment till 1230 and somebody sets, a, sets an appointment at 1230 for you, how do you feel? <laughs> Why? That's exactly right. We have to have a little margin in there, right? We've got to have a margin in our day. 
And we need to work around when we're thinking about balancing our budget of our time, have a margin in there to where we're preparing for the next time, for the next piece. Um, you know, we have to build in extra time. You know, we also have to build in time to rest and relax. You know, nothing is wrong with, with taking a day off or taking a break. Um, you know, in, in Mark 6... Mark 6 and verse, where did I find that? 30 and 31. Mark 6, it says, The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had, and they had, to, had no leisure even to eat. So Jesus said, Hey, you need to rest. We all need to have time built in there for us to, to rest. You know, what, when, when Jesus, I mean, when, when, when God in the Old Testament, I know this is different, but in the Old Testament, what was the Sabbath day for? Rest, right? Why was, why was it built in? God commanded Israel to observe that. You know, he, he, you know it was made for men. It wasn't, it wasn't made for God. It was made for men to rest. That was their time to, to rest, um, you know, and to pause uh, their bodies as much as anything. Not necessarily their, not, that, that was the day that they were to, 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 to worship God, but it was to pause their bodies. So we need to build in extra time. And, and the last thing that we need to look at, you know, and this is, this is one I've talked a little bit about already, is, is learning to say no, okay? We have to know when to say no. Um, we, we can't villainize ourselves for saying no when it's appropriate. When there are certain things that, that are asked to do, we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't make ourselves feel bad about it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of my... My, my daughter this past year, she, she is going to be running cross country in, in college. And um, before she accepted her scholarship, she asked, um, she asked the coach, she said, you know, I, I, go to, I go to church on Sundays and I have, uh, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Is there going to be any conflict of any of our practices or any of our meets that's going to get in the way of that? This was before she accepted a scholarship. And the coach said no. And it hasn't been. Okay, we, we, Sue Ann's great about putting calendar updates. We got 32 calendar updates on what, what, what's, what's going on over the next three or four or five months. But none of those were on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. But because Jaden was willing to say no to this, if the coach was like, yeah, you got, you got to be there on, on Sunday night, on, on, Wednesday, on, on Wednesday night. Um, and so I was very, very proud of her. I think she's got her head on her shoulders a lot more than I did when I was 18. So, uh, so that, that's, a, that's a pretty off, awesome thing. So we've, we've got to know that, that it's okay to say no. Um, you know, we also need to learn to ask for help. You know, Jesus was there, and he had, he had 12 people that he appointed with him, right, to help him, to help him go spread the word. He didn't do it himself. So we got to learn to ask for help and learn to have those, those folks that can, can be your support group and those folks that can, that can help you through these things. You know, time management is a major concern in, in, in our efforts to draw closer to God. So, so let's, let's resolve to use our time wisely um, so that our faith doesn't suffer. You know, and think about just how you've used your time this last week. Uh, when I started out the lesson, if, there was a lot of raised hands saying they've had a busy week, they've had a busy month, they've had a busy year. So think about your time as the day goes on today and how you're spending that time and how you might manage it more profitable for God. Questions? Comments? Yes, sir.
It's all about progress. Well, thank y'all.